Um, okay, before we start off with the actual workshop, I want to tell you guys about the workshop we are having on this Tuesday, which is a workshop in collaboration with Ethisalat. Um, we will be doing a hands-on workshop uh, using the Ethisalat web platform. Um, and we are going to build a fleet management application there. So yeah, um, be sure to um, attend that workshop as well. Okay, so be sure to attend that, that workshop. Um, let's start off with uh, today's workshop, which is uh, a note-taking application using React. Um, so let's start off with talking about what React is. Uh, React is an open source front-end JavaScript library for building user interfaces. So it makes building user interfaces on the front-end very easy and uh, um, very cool to use. Um, it was developed by Facebook um, and uh, it was developed in 2011 and it is still maintained by Facebook. Okay, so why do you want to use React? Um, there are four reasons. The first one is we can write reusable code using uh, React because React is built using components. Um, the second is that it has a smooth learning curve. It's very easy to learn abstraction because um, it offers a layer of abstraction so that you cannot see the internal React code. You can only see um, what's on the front end. Um, and it has a wide variety of uh, developer tools for developers to use and build their applications. So yeah, let's get on with the uh, actual hands-on uh, application. So. Um, here is a, an example of a notes application. There's a sidebar and there's an editor. So the way that I organize my files here is going to be um, the editor on the right side um, for which we are going to use a, a library called React Quill and the sidebar on the left side and each note I will be calling it the sidebar item. This is just the organization for the files and uh, you'll be seeing it in the code. So let's get set and react. So um, before anything, uh, it will be uh, important to download Node.js on your laptops. I hope uh, you have downloaded it. Um, so use the LTS version, which is the most recommended one for most users. Um, 
and I'll go on to my terminal but on Windows you can use the git bash or you can also use the Visual Studio terminal. Um, yeah, uh, firstly I'll check if, the no if Node is downloaded on my um, system. Uh, I'll do it by using Node flag V. So there is a version of uh, Node on my laptop and npm v to check npm which is a, a node package manager. So yes, there is a node package manager also on my screen, uh, on my computer. Um, so the way that we create a node, uh, um, a react application is just using this command npx create react app and the name of the application. Uh, okay, before this, I need to change directory to that. CD into the desktop. And uh, here I'll create my um, React application. So this is going to take a minute to um, download. Um, here uh, npx will download all of the required um, React um, libraries to make sure React is already preloaded with all the packages we might need. I think it's taking some time. Uh, it's taking a lot of time, so I guess we have to wait for this to download. I'm not sure why it's taking so much time, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so anyway, until the, um, until the React app is getting loaded, um, let me talk more about the next steps that we're going to do. Um, so um, we are, 
uh, we are within React, we need four, um, four packages, which is Material UI, um, Core and Icons, as well as React, Quill and Firebase. So, um, so Material UI is actually, a, um, it's, it provides free components to use. So using Material UI can make it really easy for us to, um, to get components without actually having to make all those components, without having to reinvent the wheel. So um, Material UI is the first thing. Then there's React Quill. Now, um, as I showed you here, um, in the editor part, the editor, uh, we, we want something very sophisticated for the editor because we want a rich text editor. So for that, um, I've, I've found this library called Quill. Um, let me show it to you. Okay, this is not the one. Um, yeah, so it's a powerful rich text editor which gives us options to change the font, to, you know, to make it um, well formatted as well. So React Quill is a version of Quill that is, uh, that was made for React itself. So that's the editor we are going to use. And for the database, we will be using Firebase. Um, Firebase is a, a database solution. It's actually a, not just database, it's, um, it's a, very wide uh, platform that um, that has been developed by Google and uh, um, we are going to be using the database solution provided by Firebase which is called Firestore. So um, Firestore is actually uh, very, um, it offers real-time updates and is very fast and easy to use. So that's why we are using Firebase. Let me just show that to you. This is Firebase. Um, until everything else, um, one minute. Oh yeah, okay. Um, we have React app. Um, so we'll get back to Firebase later. Now, um, as I told you about the packages we need to install, um, wait, let me just CD into the Node app. Then install these packages, material, UI core, material UI icons, Firebase, and React Quill. Um, yeah, so we'll let that continue to download. Um, until then, let's head on to, Fire, uh, to Firebase, go to the console. Um, let's create a new project. I will call it the note application. Continue. I don't really need Google Analytics for this project, so create project. Um, until then, oops, okay, I just made a mistake here, let's do that again. Um, until that is done, I think we have our Material UI and React Quill and Firebase downloaded. Um, let us see what happens when we run the application. We run it by typing npm start. So here we have a basic React application. All we did was run a command to create the application and we have a fully functioning um, basic React application here. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it was uh, very easy to create the initial application. Um, after working on Firebase, we are going to go to Visual Studio Code and start coding. 
So on Firebase, we have our application ready. Uh, I'm going to press this one um, to add our application to the web to a web application. Um, so a nickname for the app, node application, register the app. And we have some Firebase SDK, which we are going to add to the index file later on. For now, let's head on to the Visual Studio code. Um, I'm going to open this folder on the Visual Studio code. Uh, it's right here, note app. So as you can see, uh, React has created several um, files for us within this application and we are going to um, work on this. So first off, let's go see here. There's a function called app and it has the logo and all of that that we saw on the website. We don't need this right now, so I'm just going to remove all this because instead of a function, we are going to create an app. So class app extends react.component and we're going to build a basic um, class here with a constructor. Um, so this dot state, this state is, um, the state basically means the state of the application. Um, um, so here we're going to have three states, um, selected node index, selected node, and nodes. So selected node index is going to be the node that we select and its index. Selected node is going to be the particular node that we select and the third one is nodes, which will be an array. Um, yeah, I'll explain this again uh, when I show you the final application. And within the render, uh, we'll have a return statement, which is supposed to have, um, for now we'll uh, just call it hello world, and we'll test it to see whether it works. Um, okay, I think we need to import React. Yep. Okay, so we have a hello world application. Very basic, but we are going to go into more details very soon. Now we had a Firebase um, um, SDK here. I'm going to copy everything in between the second script tag. So copy it here. Um, go to index.js right here. And before um, the DOM render function, I'm going to paste um, my Firebase configuration. I also need to um, import Firebase. So import Firebase from Firebase app. And within, uh, within Firebase, we want Firestore. Great, so now we have added the Firebase configuration to our app. Uh, now let's go to our console on Firebase. Go to Cloud Firestore because we are using Firestore here. Um, and create a new database. We will start it in the test mode. And we'll keep the location as default. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, each database has a collection. Um, we call a con collection nodes here because our application is for nodes. Um, and then each collection has documents or you could say, for example, in Excel, there are rows of documents. Here we have documents similarly and we auto ID it, which is just an ID for each, doc each document. Um, we have two fields, one is the title and another is the body. Um, because each node, we want it to have a title and a body. So uh, the title, let me call it um, today's title. And the body, uh, this is today's note. So we have some sample um, note here. Let's save it. Okay, great. So we'll get back to Firebase later. Now we want to uh, go into Visual Studio and start coding. Um, before, um, before we start coding, I also want to um, create a new file under the SRC folder. I'll call it helpers.js. These are just some helper functions. Um, I'm going to copy them from this um, previous application I created. And you can also do the same. So it's a debounce function here and a remove, remove HTML tags function here. So um, debounce function and remove HTML tags are going to be used later. So I will be explaining them when I use them in the files. For now, uh, I will close this um, and this as well. Um, yeah, so now in app.js, I want to create, so we have a hello world application here. What I want to do is create a lifestyle hook here. I will tell you what that is. So component did mount. Component did mount um, is basically a function that is called whenever the app is mounted onto the browser. So um, we want to load in the nodes from the Firebase into our application. And we are going to do that in the component did mount function. So, oops, yeah, um, before that, let me just import Firebase. And within Firebase, uh, import Firestore. So um, within component did mount, we call Firebase. And we call a function of Firebase called Firestore. And um, oops, one minute. And within Firestore, we want to connect with the nodes collection which we just created. Then we call an on snapshot function. The on snapshot function basically gives us a snapshot of the database. So um, it um, gives us a snapshot and within, within this we are going to call a callback function. Um, I'm going to call it server update as the parameter and within it goes some code.
okay so i'll explain what i did just now um so within firebase i call firestore within firestore i call collection notes and within that i i need a snapshot of the um database so um within that i passed a callback function and um, what we are doing is basically getting each document from the database um the map function creates an array called nodes here and then we pass the nodes array to our nodes which is coming from here which is the um which is the nodes state okay now um as i said we need three folders uh, we need three um parts of the application one is the sidebar one is the sidebar item and one is the um editor so within src folder i am going to create three folders uh, three sub folders oops uh i created files by mistake okay so sidebar editor sidebar item Uh, within editor i need two files editor.js um and styles.js within sidebar also i want two files sidebar.js styles.js within sidebar also same sidebar item dot js styles dot js so we have these set up um now for each of these files i am going to write a basic code to get everything up and running i am going to copy the import statements from here and create an editor component class with the constructor and the editor is going to have a state as well um i pass in a javascript object so in the editor we want to see the title the body and we want to give it an id so the body title and an id so we have the state ready and then we go to render and we return we return a basic um this is the editor um this is the editor kind of like an hello world um return for now so that we can test it out if the if everything is working on the website and then we export it so i will explain what happens here just a minute okay so with styles is um a feature of material ui and what material ui does is um what with styles does is it takes the styles 
file from here, the styles.js file, and um, adds it to the editor component and then exports the, the component. So this is much more straightforward compared to doing a CSS and then linking the CSS here. Um, so we have an editor component and we have a return statement with a, this is, this is the editor text and it also has a state called a body title and ID. Um, now we need a styles.js file which contains the styles we want to apply here. So I am going to go here to my previous application and I will just copy the styles. Um, copy and paste the styles. Uh, you can look at the styles later on and see um, and play around with them and see what works for the application best. Um, so now we have the editor and the styles.js associated with the editor. Um, now I will go on to the sidebar. We'll also copy the import statements from here because that makes it much more straightforward. Um, we are importing React from React, importing with styles using which we are going to export the application. We are importing styles, the styles.js um, file from here. We are importing a list um, component, a divider component, a button component from Material UI. So we don't have to write these um, components from start. We can just import them from Material UI. Um, and we also import the sidebar item component which we will talk about soon. So now I'm ju just going to make a sidebar class. which extends the React component. So this line basically just makes the sidebar component as a React component. A basic constructor. We, we don't need any, um, any state here for now. And then we want it to render, uh, this is the sidebar text on our browser so we do it by returning div this is the sidebar and then we have to export the sidebar component so we do export default with styles styles which is the styles.js file and then pass the component, sidebar component. Hmm. Okay, so now we have done the sidebar class and we need to get in the styles.js for the sidebar. I will copy it from the sidebar folder, paste it here. So, now we are done with the basic boilerplate code for the editor and the sidebar. Um, we are going to do something similar for the sidebar item. Um, so get the um, import statements from here. We are importing React. We are importing with styles, um, styles, um, import list item, list item text, which are components coming from the um, material UI and a delete icon coming also from material UI and a remove HTML tags, which is coming from the helpers file, which we copied earlier here. I'm going to show you the output in just a minute because I need the editor, the sidebar and the sidebar item to be set up so that I can um, then add it to the app.js file and then we can run the application and show how it works.
So we make a sidebar item component that extends react.component with a constructor. We don't need a state here either. And we just want it to return um, something saying this is the sidebar item. And the same thing we are going to do here, export default with styles. Pass in the styles.js. Um, pass in the sidebar item component. So we have the boilerplate code ready for sidebar item.js as well. The last thing we need to do is um, copy over the styles.js. So we have that now. Um, so let me recap. There are three folders within the SRC folder, the editor, the sidebar and the sidebar item. Within that we have two JavaScript files the editor.js, the styles.js, sidebar.js, styles.js and so on. Each of these, for example, editor.js contains an editor component, sidebar.js contains a sidebar component and so on. We pass in a state here in the constructor when required by the component. And then within the render, we pass in this is the editor or this is the sidebar. Finally, we um, export the component with styles uh, along with uh, along with the styles required for the component just one step um, remaining to display it on our browser which is that we need to import all of this into the app.js so that we can get the components and show them on the application so i will import um, two of the components which is the editor and the sidebar so import the editor component from dot slash editor slash editor and import sidebar component from slash sidebar slash sidebar. After importing, we will place our um, components right here I will call in the sidebar component first and then call in the editor component here um, I will also give this one a class name um, app container And yes, that's it for now. So we can go ahead um, and go to our terminal to see if there are any errors. Mm, there's just warnings. So let's go to our React application. Okay. Okay, so in the app class, there seems to be an error. Class app extends react.component.
Give me a minute to figure this out. Wow, the life of a programmer. <laughs> um, yeah, just brackets that cause errors. I'm not sure where. Um, let me know one thing. I will just copy the um, stuff from here because it might take a while to um, do it there. Just I'll just copy the constructor. See if that makes a difference. Okay, must be something. So, um, as you can see, we have this is the sidebar and this is the editor which has been displayed here. If we inspect it, uh, we can see that um, yeah, uh, React has converted everything into HTML. But if we go back and see in the app.js, we have first called in a sidebar component and then called in an editor component. And both of them are just typing in text called this is the sidebar and this is the editor. And that is exactly what we have received here. So now we see that with all the boilerplate code that we have started off with, uh, everything works so far. So, um, so yeah, we can go ahead and move on, start uh, typing code into the editor component, into the sidebar component and the sidebar item component and then we can finally um, soon I hope uh, make the node application. Um, so in the editor we are using um, a library called react quill. So firstly I'm just going to go to index.html. Uh, I have to um, copy the React Quill CSS code here. Um, so React Quill CSS. So we copy the uh, the style sheet from here, paste it into the index.html. That's it. We don't need index.html again. So I'm going to close it. Um, now inside the editor, I need a few things. Um, firstly, I am going to get the classes from the props. So props are actually called properties and what properties mean is here in the app.js I could pass in some properties here like um, what happens if I change something so an on change function or some kind of other property that we can pass here 
so we are going to pass it on later but for now um, this dot props gives us the classes then within the return statement I need to put three things um, firstly I will put the react quill Now React Quill um, by default has two values being passed. One is the value and another is, a, is an on change function to which we have to pass a function which will be called whenever there's a change in the React Quill component. Um, and close this in a oops within a div okay so we have a react quill component here with a value and an on change the value means um, the state of the body so um, the body um, let me show you again um, so this will be the react quill component and within this um, within this um, this um, this text is going to be called the body and in a function later we are going to set the body as the text that is written here and on change function which will call the update body function um, which will basically update the written text into the firebase so um, the react quill is done um, now we need to pass an input and a border color icon mm. The input, the input is basically an input form where we enter the title of the uh, of the um, note. So we are going to assign it a class. Assign a placeholder which will be displayed until we write something there. A value because we want the title to be here and um, here we will use the conditional operator if there is a title um, the value will be assigned to the title else the value will be assigned to null and here also we pass an on change um, we will pass the function right here so this will um, we will implement the update title very soon after this we want the border color icon to be there and within it we will pass a class name so the classes edit icon and title input are present in styles.js if we go here we can see it um, edit icon is here and I think the other one was title input which is here so 
we have editor.js everything that we want to return inside the div is present now um, we want to then implement the title input and the update title and also the update body update body update title and update which is actually called inside um, which is called inside update body and inside update title um, both update body and update title are going to be asynchronous we use asynchronous functions whenever we want something to be um, uh, whenever we want this particular line to be completed and then um, sorry so we use await whenever we want to um, completely um, execute everything here um, and then only move on to the next line so so yeah um, we want this and then we call this dot update here as well okay with an update title um, update title is also asynchronous we pass in a text the text is actually passed in here so this is the text txt and we use the txt and assign it to the title so await this dot set state um, title is the txt parameter and then we again call this dot update and this dot update is actually meant to uh, go and update it in into the database so when we want our node application to be such that whenever there is a change in the uh, node it is updated into the database as well so um, the update will we will pass in a debounce function as well so um, I will again explain I will soon explain what debounce is all about then I will pass in a function within this so update is a function which is which goes to a debounce function and within debounce another function is passed um, yeah um, so let me explain what debounce is all about debounce basically wants to um, delay the um, updation of the database by a few seconds so we want that whenever we uh, make a change to the database it shouldn't keep on sending uh, uh, requests to the database every second or every millisecond because that will just overload the system a lot so debounce will make sure that uh, so debounce takes in a parameter here we pass in 1500 which is 1 1.5 seconds so uh, debounce will make sure that the database is up updated only every 1 1.5 seconds so that makes sure that the system is not overloaded and it also makes sure that updates are happening every few seconds so within that we call this node update function 
this dot state dot id so um the title is passed the body is passed and the state id is passed into the node update function the node update function will be present in app.js and it is passed to the editor through props so let me show you um let me go to app.js pass in some props here to show you how the props work So with an editor component, we pass in a few props. Um, selected note. Selected note index. We are just passing the state of the app dot js. Uh, the app component into the editor component so that it can be used by the editor component as well and the note update function which is here so this node update function will be passed to, to the editor component here to this editor component and then we can use it here this dot props dot node update um yeah and i think we'll try to display the editor for once so that we can see something visual let's see if it's displayed okay something is displayed but it's not okay mm -hmm. so this is the sidebar is as it is and then there is a whole editor component right here this whole thing is the uh, is the editor so it's skewed a little bit right now because of the css but uh, yeah at least we can type something here this is the body of the title okay um it it gave an error because the node update function has not been implemented but um let's go ahead and implement that now in the app.js we pass the node update function uh, it will take an id and a note object and within it again we will call firebase firestore collection firestore dot collection the notes collection and um, within it we want to look for a particular doc uh, so we have passed in the id and we look for the particular document with that id because we want to update it and then we uh, call the update function within the update function we pass in the note object um, the title so in firebase if you remember we had passed a title and a body there so the title will be called note object dot title 
and the body will be called node object dot body. So yeah, that's it. Um, let's see if that works now. I think there's something missing in our uh, in our function path, so we can figure that out um, later. But for now, the editor uh, component was being displayed, and along with that, um, we have displayed a, we have finished a node update function as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just give me a minute. Um, so anyway, we are almost done with the edit uh, editor. Um, editor component. Let's move on to the sidebar. So we have something, um, something to show on the sidebar as well. So sidebar, and in the render function, instead of just returning this is the sidebar, we want to return something with the nodes. Firstly, we destructure the classes, the props. So basically, we are getting um, from the app.js. Here, here, we will be passing some props, which will come here and which will be called this dot props here and we destructure them using this line. So we get notes, we get classes and we get selected using it. Classes dot sidebar container. Um, oh, I think in this one we have not given a div. That's why the CSS was not working properly. This um, class name will be classes dot editor container I think if we go uh, here now okay we can figure out the classes very soon but for now, uh, in sidebar, the sidebar container is the name of the class. We call in a button. And we need a button because we want a button that will, that when clicked, it will create a new node. So on click, we call the new node function, this dot new node. And we will also give this a class, classes dot new node button. 
here we will uh, implement these functions. Okay, just the new node function. Um, we will implement it in just a minute. Until then, um, we want, uh, okay, so let me go here. Now this is the sidebar and within it there are going to be a list of nodes. So um, and each node will be a sidebar item. So here we will call a list, firstly a list. Um, within it I am going to uh, write JSX so I will just put a curly braces. Then call nodes.map. What map does is it iterates over each um, each um, component of the array and then you, we can pass in a function to, um, to tell it what to do. So we pass in a node and an index and this will iterate over each node. So each node and each, each index and based on the number of nodes it will display the number of items on the list. We pass in a key so that we know how many items are there. And we get the sidebar item component. So, yeah, and within the sidebar item component, we have to pass some props. So, the first one is the note. Then there's the index. Selected node index. And two functions, select node and delete node. We also pass in a divider which will just display a line uh, in between each item. So now that we have passed these two functions we need to implement them here as well. So there is select node and there is delete node. Um, so one more thing here is, so um, whenever we uh, get the nodes, uh, where is that, yeah this one, so if the nodes array is empty then this whole thing is going to give us an error. So we will just enclose this in an if statement. So if there are nodes, then this entire thing if there are nodes, then this entire uh, sidebar will be displayed else um, sometimes it takes time uh, for the nodes to be loaded so else we will just display a loading word here so it might take just a few minutes for 
um, the nodes here, if you see these nodes, um, component did mount here, uh, sets the nodes um, state here as the nodes that are ret returned from Firebase. So to connect to Firebase and retrieve all the nodes may take some time. So until then, um, the loading um, keyword is displayed just for a few seconds. Okay, I think the div should be outside, right here. Um, brackets. If notes are just a minute. Um, Okay, I'm just going to copy it from here because it's the same thing, but uh, it's just that there were some errors with the Yeah, I think it should work now. The mistake I made was that if notes should be outside and within that the return statement has to be made. Okay, great. So in the sidebar, we now have a button uh, using which we can uh, create a new note. We have a new note function here, which will be called whenever we want to click that button. Then there will be a list which will show us um, each note and the way it will do this is by calling a sidebar item component and between each of these um, items will be a divider. Um, yeah, and then whenever the nodes have been loaded, the loading statement goes away and the nodes are loaded. We will implement these functions later. Let's head on to the sidebar item so that as soon as possible we have something visual to see. So here we have just written, uh, this is a sidebar item, but we want to do something more concrete here. Firstly, we um, get the, we destructure the props. So the props that we have are index, note, classes, and selected node index.
okay and how do we know these are the props that have been passed we go to sidebar we see where sidebar item component is there and we see we have note that has been uh, passed as a prop there's index and there's selected node index and there are also um, two functions select node and delete node so the functions we will use later but the other props we will destructure them here Now we use a material UI um, component it's called list item and we call it right here we have imported it right here import list item text from material UI core um, and also this so list item and list item text now within list item we pass in some props some properties the class will be called classes dot list item and you know why we use these particular names for our classes because the styles dot js contains exactly that um, the styles dot js contains a style called list item that is then called here so classes dot list item and this particular CSS will be applied on this list item here. Selected is equal to selected node index equal to so whenever we select a particular node we we want to make sure that um, the selected node index is equal to the index of this particular item so that's why the whenever this whenever this entire thing becomes true then selected becomes true and so that particular node is highlighted Okay, so the list item is done with all the properties. Now within it, we want to pass something else. We want to pass in the list item text to display text inside the list item. So um, inside that we call in a div and we give it some classes. Classes.text section, then on click, is equal to a function and we pass in note and index so um, as I said within the div we need a list item text And uh, the list item text also takes in some parameters. So there is primary and then there is secondary. Now primary um, means the primary text, means the text which is displayed in a bigger font. And then there is a secondary text which you can use if needed to uh, write the body of the uh, note. So primary is equal to note dot title 
so we display the node title here and secondary we display a part of the body of the node underscore node dot body um, and just a substring of the body up to right like 30 characters so uh, this one actually what react uh, react will does is that uh, whatever is typed into the text is uh, then saved as uh, into the database as HTML so we want to remove the HTML tags and if you remember in the helpers file here we had uh, copied a remove HTML tags function after this we want to just um, pass in some dots to make it look nice okay so we have a list item uh, yeah um, and then we write the delete node and uh, select node functions here Uh, we will um, write in more detail later but um, let's see what else we have to do um, in app.js we have to go and pass in the props so we want a sidebar component to have the selected note index the nodes array and three functions new node select node and delete node okay so <laughs> we are almost done with a lot of things uh, let's make some functions okay so we will write the functions very soon but for now let us uh, let us see if everything is getting displayed okay I think the CSS is a little messed up but everything else seems to be fine let me just check the styles um, okay uh, let's figure out the CSS uh, soon but for now let's see there is a sidebar here with a new node function there is a um, editor component right here which is giving errors but that's because we have not implemented it completely um, and yeah I think we are done with a basic thing we just need to refine it a little more so let's write the functions now 
सो न्यू नोट um i am just going to copy it right here because that saves time and i have more time to explain it to you so um new note will be an asynchronous function and if you see when we highlighted async the await keyword also got highlighted so whenever we want to use an await keyword we have to make the function asynchronous so we have uh, here we want to await this entire um this entire statement so we want firebase to add so firebase dot firestore dot collection notes and we use the add function to add um to add this particular note um which is to add an empty note with an empty title and an empty body so here we say title note dot title body note dot body and if we want we can add a timestamp as well so when we click on the new node function an empty um, node is created and then here what we do is um when that node is um when that node is created we want it to be selected so if you remember um right here okay not here here uh this particular thing so when the selected node index is equal to the index of this particular item that particular node is selected so um when we set the selected node um and the selected node index to this node to the new node index and um um and set the state of that of the app component then um a new node is created which has um which has that new node selected so that's the new node function then let's go to select node select node is just a small line select node takes in a node and an index and it sets the state um as selected node index becomes that index and selected node becomes this node and that's how the node is selected now delete node delete node is right here now delete node is also an asynchronous function because we are using an await keyword and we want to await this particular line here and uh, when we click on the delete uh, button we want that the particular node is deleted from our browser as well as from firebase so we delete from the firebase using this particular function dot delete using the node id using the node id and uh, here uh, we are basically removing it from our um sidebar item so uh, from our state actually so this dot set state this dot state dot notes um from our notes we filter out that particular um note this note and everything else is remaining in the notes collection um and this particular part is meant to um basically whenever we want to delete a note we use this to determine what else should be selected now after the selected note has been deleted so if the selected node is the same as the node that has to be deleted 
then nothing is selected now and else um, if the node's length is greater than 1 then the same node is continued to be selected by uh, by subtracting the index by 1 and if there's nothing left in the nodes array then of course nothing null is selected so the delete node is done now I promise you just a few things left and then we are soon to be done with this um, okay so I think we are done with app.js mostly have the component did mount select no okay yeah so app.js is pretty much done we can leave that aside for some time now uh, let's see if we have any functions to implement in the editor.js okay there doesn't seem to be anything here so in the sidebar.js uh, new node select node and delete node have to be implemented Okay, so the new nodes will just be taken from the props. So this dot props dot new node because we are passing in the new node function from app.js into sidebar.js. Select node will also be something similar, this dot props dot select node. In select node we pass in a node and an index delete node will also be quite similar this dot props dot delete node and we want to pass in that particular node so now we are done also with sidebar last stop is sidebar item select node is also coming from the props so select node takes in a node and an index this dot props dot select node and comma i delete node is this dot props dot delete node note one more thing is we want to confirm whether the person wants to actually delete the node or was it by mistake so we do this So there will be a window appearing whenever delete node is called which will ask you are you sure you want to delete node.title. Uh, I have used backticks here to make sure that I can use this uh, variable here. Um, so it will display the title of that node and if we click on yes then this delete node is called from the props. okay let's see what we have here for some reason this one gives an error Um, okay, but um, I think we have one small thing left, which is the delete icon here. Delete icon, which takes in a class called uh, 
classes dot delete icon and an on click function okay um we are done with our entire code um oh yeah i think there was something so when we went into firebase we created a um uh, sample note called today's title and this is today's note so we have that here and we have everything else the sidebar the editor but this is giving an error so i am just going to show you um because this thing is going to take a huge amount of time to debug all i will do is i will go into my react application which i finished um earlier to show you uh, how it should work so it's loading and then we have all our notes here we, when we click on new note a uh, new note is um is formed is created with an empty title and an empty body uh we can write the title here we can write hello from our workshop here as the body uh it's a rich text editor so we can do a number of things we can call this the heading um underline it do a bunch of things here uh we can also um select different notes we can delete this particular note are you sure you want to delete it okay and it's deleted and then there's nothing the editor is not being displayed because nothing is there uh, nothing is selected and as soon as we select something we have the note being displayed here so yeah uh, this is what i wanted to show you for today's workshop i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something um i hope you learned something and uh, please ask your questions here i'll try to um answer them and yeah see you for the next workshop our next workshop is on tuesday um it's a workshop in collaboration with ethisalat we are building a fleet management system using ethisalat's web platform and uh, i'm really excited for it so i hope you are excited too so yeah see you there <laughs>